Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden and welcome to Herb Day. I am super excited about this. I have been looking forward to planting some herbs for a couple months now in these Vigo garden beds. I figure this is the best place to plant them in my garden. They'll be up, they'll be safe from any critters or anything like that. My goal for my herbs this season is that I want to grow enough herbs that I can use them in, you know, fresh and cooking, but I also want to dry them. I want to dry them and I want to save them so I have my herbs that I've grown to use in my cooking all winter long. Um, so most of these are going to last Last a really really long time. The only thing that won't last a super long time dried is the basil uh, just because that loses its potency once you dry it after just about three to six months. So I'll still be able to use it throughout the um, throughout the winter but everything else is I think is just going to be absolutely perfect. So I got these herbs. I have to tell you all I found the coolest place. A lot of you have told me about it. It is very sunny. It was just overcast just a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> Let me move the camera. Hold on. All right. I think that's a little bit better. It's all on bright, sunny days like today, which is amazing, by the way. I am so in spring mode at this point, which is so exciting. It's, sometimes it's hard for me to tell if you all can see what I'm doing or whether I'm just completely blown out, but I, I think it's okay. Shade is usually a good bet. So hopefully you all can see this. So I got all these herbs from a place called Morning Sun Herb Farm. They are located in Vacaville, California, which is about 25 minutes from me. And it is just one of those gem of places. I've had quite a few people tell me that I had to go visit, but I just, I don't know. I just never, it was never really on my list, high up on my list. And I am so disappointed that I didn't go sooner because it's such a fantastic place. And when I went, I met the owner. Her name is Rose and she knows her stuff. I, this is just one of my favorite things to do is meet these, meet these, uh, garden center owners, meet these nursery owners and see what they're passionate about. And Rose is passionate about herbs. It was so much fun. I did ask her if I could come back and film and um, and take video with her in it. And she said yes, which I'm very excited about. So stay tuned for that. But she does Morning Star, no, Morning Sun Herb Farm does have a couple of videos on YouTube and I'll, I'll find them and link them down below. But anyways, Rose was telling me about all the different varieties of herbs that she has. So it's not just basics. It's not just like parsley and basil and thyme and oregano. There's like 20 different types of basil and 20 different types of mint and, you know, 20 different types of parsley. I'm probably exaggerating a little bit. Sorry, Rose, but you kind of get what I'm saying. And then the other cool thing was she had these handwritten signs with all the interesting facts about the herbs that she was selling. And some of them, some of the facts were so so cool. One of them was talking about a basil that was really good to use as salad greens. And I asked her about this. I said, why would you eat a basil salad? That doesn't, that doesn't really sound good to me. But she was telling me how in a lot of cultures, they use herbs as their salad greens. They use parsley as their, as their salad, right? Parsley leaves instead of lettuce leaves. So it's just something really, really cool to try and something new. And I'm really excited that I went there and met Rose and found her. And so hopefully I have some good videos from Morning Sun Herb Farm for all of you. So this is my whole haul that I got. I'm going to be planting it in my Vigo garden beds. Um, Again, my goal is is to dry all of these herbs. Well, not all of them. I'm going to use them all fresh, but then I'm also going to save some, harvest some, and dry them so that I will have dried herbs to use all season long as well and kind of like increase my stash. And what I'll just tell you all, what I really want to do is uh, get used to this, get comfortable with doing it this way, and then eventually, probably not this year, but maybe next year, I want to start a tea garden where I actually grow plants to use in teas and uh, like harvest my own teas and make my own, you know, tea blends and all that kind of stuff. That was inspired by Kate David, um, who I met at the Northwest Flower and Garden Festival. She's so fantastic. I did a couple videos with her, but she's really big into tea gardens. And so I figured I would start with herbs, but I'm, I'm going to work my way up to tea gardens. Okay, so my plan is to plant my herbs in, I think I'm gonna plant them in this garden bed right in, right there. Actually, maybe I'll plant them in this garden bed. Um, you can see what's taking up a ton of space. It's absolutely beautiful. These 
cabbages. They are ready to come out. And I have to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of cabbage. I actually think that they stink now. Um, <laughs> so no, I will not be making them for my family, but I do have a friend that has already called these. So I'm going to be giving them to her. I'll probably give her all of them, honestly, which is probably too much for her. But I mean, they, they're they gorgeous. The only reason why I grew these is because Robbie gave me some starts. And so I figured I would put them in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting them, putting all my herbs over here. I think that will be a really good spot for them. Um, my peas are not looking good. Uh, I've already fertilized them. Look at the pretty flowers. I've already fertilized them, but they're just I don't know. They're just not very happy. I swear. I'm like, I can grow a flower like nothing. But when it comes to vegetables, I don't know what it is. I have a hard time with vegetables. <laughs> Probably because I don't pay that much attention to it, honestly. I'm going to do better. I keep telling myself I'm going to do better at vegetables. I'm working on it. And then if you see all this stuff behind me and are wondering what it is, this is the very beginnings of my chicken coop. And I am very excited about it. And I think Isaac and Milo are pretty excited. They're the ones that are, I've kind of given them this project. I gave, literally, I gave them a picture and I said, I want a chicken coop to look like this. <laughs> that was it. And so it's kind of, you know, the ball's in their court. They are in charge. They get to make all the decisions on all of it. And I think that they're excited about that. So, and, and I'm excited to see what they come up with. Um, so we, they went to Home Depot, they got a whole bunch of two by fours and they started painting them. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So I'll keep you all updated. It's going to be a, you know, a process because they, you know, they can only work on it on the days that they're actually here working. So yeah, so that's, what's behind me. And then you probably did see in the background, see, see what I mean? I can do flowers. I can totally do flowers. These are my ranunculus. They look so beautiful. Look at this one. Oh, I just love it so much. So ranunculus, they're so easy to do that you can put them in. This, These will... Um, like over winter, like I can leave these in as perennials here in my zone. But because I ended up putting them in the Vigo garden beds, I don't think that they should stay in here. So I'm going to let them grow. I'm going to enjoy them. And then I will actually dig up the corms and save them and then plant them somewhere else a little bit more permanent next year. But they look beautiful. Okay. And as for the herbs that I chose, I, the thing that I was focusing on was like some interesting varieties, some varieties that they had at the herb farm that, that looked good to me, like something that I would want to eat. And I smelled every single one and made sure that it smelled good. There was a couple of them that I smelled and was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to eat this. So I didn't take those. Um, but the other thing that I focused on was getting the smaller varieties because they are going, I mean, it's basically going in raised beds and containers, the Vigo beds. I wanted to make sure that I didn't get the ones that were going to get four feet wide. I mean, this is, this is probably the closest. This is the Blue Spires Rosemary. Um, this one, it says it's good for the small garden, but it still gets like three feet. So I'll probably keep that trimmed as much as I can. And then let's see, what else did I get? As for the basil, I chose two different kinds of basil. I did want to get the Genovese type because I love that. I think it smells so good. Um, but instead of just going with the normal one, I got this purple one. What's it called? Amethyst. It was just a purple color. It smells just like the regular Genovese basil. That's, that's, you know, the basil that they sell in the grocery stores when you think of basil. Um, and I just thought it was so pretty. And then this one, this is the most interesting one I got. I think this is called a Jaca, a Jaca basil. And this one is really, really interesting. It smells it smells very, very good. And I was so excited because the girl that was checking me out, she said, she saw this and she said, oh, that's my favorite type of basil. I'm so glad you got this. And I asked her why it was her favorite. She said, one, because it doesn't bloom until the end of the season. So you don't have to worry about pinching it back. And two, she said it made the most delicious pesto. So definitely going to be doing that. I'll keep you all updated. Then I got some purple sage. The reason why I got this is because they were saying this is a good one to go in small spaces. It doesn't get as big as the regular sage and it's pretty. Um, English thyme, just because I am obsessed with the smell of English thyme. I think it smells so delicious. So had to get that one. Last year I got lemon thyme and I have to be honest, I was missing, missing the scent of just pure English time. So 
How'd you get that? This one is oregano and this is Greek oregano. And Rose was telling me that like, it's like I was saying, you have to go and you have to smell the herbs to decide which variety you want. So she had a couple different varieties of oregano. And so this one, the Greek one, which I think is like the basic one, this one smelled the best to me. So I'm going to be using that. And then of course, parsley. Rose told me that parsley is so important in an herb garden, not only because not, you know, not just for us to use parsley, but when it blooms, it's so good for pollinators. So, so good for pollinators. So to let it bloom a little bit, let it, let it flower, and then the pollinators will be all over it. So that's what I'm planning to do with the parsley. So anyway, she wanted me to say, make sure you have parsley in with your herb garden. It's not just the basics. You know, it's something that's really important. Then I do have chive, which yes, it's probably going to spread a little bit, but I'll just, I'll, I'll keep track of it. Then I did pick up two teas, two that I'm going to uh, just try for tea. You know, I'm just going to see how they do. This one is German chamomile. So it just smelled so good. It said the foliage smells like apples and it does. So I'm going to try that and who doesn't love chamomile tea. And then this one is lemon balm. Same thing. It just smelled delicious and I just had to have it. So that is going to be my herb garden. I'm sure I will add more to it <laughs> next time I go to Morning Sun, which I think is going to be pretty soon. Um, but at least this is what I'm going to get started with. So let's get planting. <music> all done that was a very easy gardening job and i even had a little carrot snack and gave the bunnies a snack as well so my carrots are looking good they would have looked even better had i thinned them i never got around to thinning them which is what you're supposed to do with carrots give them some room to grow but that's all right <laughs> i told you guys i'm working on it actually those look pretty good right those look good <laughs> Anyway, so I'll give those to the bunnies too. So as for the herb garden, like I said, super easy, especially in the raised beds that I didn't even have to bend over. I did the tallest ones kind of in the center and then just kind of going out from there. So I have the rosemary, which is the blue spires rosemary that gets about three feet tall. Um, the Greek oregano gets two feet tall, lemon balm, two feet tall chamomile two feet tall, the amethyst basil two feet tall, the ajaka basil only gets 18 inches, um, English thyme shorter than that. I don't remember. I'm, I cannot remember this. 12 inches. Chives get 12 inches. Um, the the sage only gets 18 inches purple sage and then finally the parsley i think gets two feet yeah two feet tall so i think that this is going to be nice and full and 
and full of scent and aroma. And as, so if you remember, I sowed uh, romaine seeds here and they are taking forever to grow, absolutely forever to grow. Um, so I'm afraid it's going to get too hot for them um, and they'll possibly start bolting. Apparently these varieties are supposed to handle the heat, but I mean, we're going to start getting hot here pretty soon if these guys don't don't hurry up. So if I have to take these out and I'm going to replace them with more herbs, I will be fine with that. This one, this is like the only one that's growing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So for those of you who love herbs, let me know if you think I'm missing anything, if I'm missing one of your favorites. I tried to get a like a well-rounded selection of different types um, for my herb garden, but I'm sure I'm missing something. And if there's something in particular, please let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, luckily, I have access to herbs from the Morning Sun Herb Farm. They pretty much have every single herb you can think of, so I know where to get it. And I, I can't wait to show you all a more in-depth look and for you all to meet Rose because she's really, really, she's really interesting and she's really amazing. And Raphael from Park Winters told me that she is like the master at pruning lavender. So I can't wait to talk to her a little bit more about that. And then last thing real quick, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you. I did a quick little announcement on my community page here on YouTube and then also on Instagram about my new venture that I'm working on. And that is I am starting a Dig Plant Water Repeat podcast. Yes, it's very exciting. What's even more exciting though is that so many of you went and followed that the podcast got to number one on the top charts for Apple Podcasts under the leisure category and Home and Garden is under the leisure category. So that is so incredible and I just want to say thank you guys so much because it actually really, really helps the podcast out and allow it to get seen and allow more people to listen to it which is great. Um, so just just a really, really big thank you to all of you uh, for going and following. And um, it's not just Apple. It's not just Apple Podcasts. You can follow on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. And then I just wanted to tell you all a little bit of background because I, I feel like a lot of you were really surprised when I announced it. And um, <laughs> And yes, you have every right to be surprised. Like, what am I doing? But the only reason why I'm doing a podcast, well, one, I like to talk about gardening, of course. So that's pretty easy. But two, um, I'm pretty lucky. Nepotism at its best. I have an uncle who actually has a podcasting company, production company. And he is, he lives in New York City. He used to work for Sirius Radio. And now he and a partner has started their own uh, podcasting company called Calaroga Shark Media. And so he was looking for a gardening podcast and his niece was here talking about gardening over in California. So it just kind of ended up to be perfect. So I don't have to do anything other than record myself talking and they do all the production and all the editing and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's really, they are the ones that are making the magic. They're doing such a good job. And the first episode sounds so good. I can't wait for you all to hear it. The first episode airs April 1st. So make sure you follow. I will put the link down below for Apple. I'll try, I'll try and find the Spotify podcast. I listen to my podcasts on Apple. So that's, that's the one that I'm used to. Um, so anyway, it's going to be really fun. I I have so many guests lined up. I'm so excited. Uh, and it's just going to be just one more way that we can talk about gardening. So anyway, a big thank you to all of you who followed. It's It's been a really exciting week. So I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today. 